Well, talk about down to the wire. After months of negotiations, Greece finally has a $95 billion bailout deal on the table from EU creditors. It's third bailout in just the past five years. So is this the final act of the Greek debt drama? Well, our own Larry Edelson is here today, and he says, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hi, I'm Mike Burnick from Money and Markets Extra, and Larry's joining me today to explain why the Greek crisis may only be the opening act of a much worse sovereign debt crisis worldwide. Hi, Larry. Thanks for joining us today. No problem, Mike. Thanks for calling on me. Recently, you wrote this is only the beginning of what you see as an epic debt crisis is about to envelop government sovereign bond markets globally, perhaps including the United States over the next several years. Give us the details on your forecast, Larry. Well, crises always start, you know, with the small fries, okay, and not to uh, insult the Greek citizens, but Greece is the tipping point for a sovereign debt crisis in Europe. It's going to spread to the peripheral economies of Europe, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and other weaker indebted countries uh, of the European Union, and then it's going to leapfrog to Japan, perhaps one of the most indebted of all, Western economies, and then, I'm sorry, but Washington will get hit as well a few years from now, uh, possibly as little as two years from now, because compared to even Japan, we're actually the worst debtor in the world. Right. So you expect us to be all-encompassing. You know, I just spent two weeks in Italy and Greece, as you know, and investors there are plenty worried about this situation. But you expect the crisis to spread far beyond Greece and, and hit a lot of other countries. How soon? What's your timeline for this? Well, it, it's, you know, it, it's been building momentum over the last couple of years or so. And Greece is really now the tipping point. That's going to lead, as I just mentioned, to other countries in the European Union. There isn't one of them, such as Italy, uh, Portugal, Spain, uh, Cyprus, that can pay its debts. The problem here is the European leaders are saddling more debt upon indebted countries. The latest deal with Greece, they rammed the terms down uh, Cyprus's throat and, and he in turn has to go back home and really become a traitor to his own people and try to ram it down Parliament. And all it's going to do is contract the economy more, these harsh austerity measures, and settle more debt on them. So, I mean, you know, a, a two-year-old with a calculator can figure out that this isn't going to work for Greece. It's not going to work for Italy, Portugal, Spain, Cyprus, and ultimately for France as well. Right. Uh, but we have the same problem in Japan. It's much, much larger, actually, in Japan, and it's even larger in the United States. So you expect this to result in a, really a crisis of confidence in government bond markets worldwide, spreading, as you said, to Japan, even the U.S.? Oh, yes. You know, we're already starting to see it in the sense that, you know, long-term bond prices are down across the board all over the world. Uh, and yields are starting to rise. That Investors are starting to vote with their pocketbooks. They're saying, hey, look, we don't think we'll ever get paid back. Right. So we're getting out of these things. So we've already seen massive capital flows as a result of this crisis. The trillions of dollars that have stampeded out of bond markets, it all has to go somewhere. So the question is, where are the opportunities? Which markets stand to benefit, in your view, Larry? Well, you're absolutely right, Mike. That's, that's the interesting thing. This is very similar to the 1930s when Europe went bankrupt. The other side of the depression story that no one ever seems to tell you about. Europe went bankrupt back then. It sent trillions to the United States into our stock markets, even though we were in a depression. But the money has to go somewhere, as you just said. And the U.S. equity market long term, I've been saying all along, is very, very bullish. Not so much due to corporate profits. I mean, we have some great companies. We have great corporate earnings compared to the rest of the world. But the predominant force is the $150 trillion of investor capital that's circling the globe looking for a safe place to go. And in the end, our markets represent the deepest, most liquid markets out there in the last bastion of capitalism. Right. Yeah, so you know, I expect, you know, long term, our, our market to do very well. Right. We've already seen it impact our stock market here in recent years, which has driven right. some really big gains in the S&P 500. What do you see as the, you know, as the, as the next follow through, the next chapter here? Well, sometime 
in the not too distant future, commodity markets will become a recipient of that tsunami, tsunami of, of capital that's leaving Europe and then will exit Japan as well. And the reason for that is at some point, investors realize that this is not just your typical debt crisis. Okay, this isn't just Greece. It's all of Europe, it's Japan, and ultimately the United States as well. So when they begin to realize that it's the downfall of Western-style socialist governments who can't make good on their debts and their IOUs, then they're going to want tangible assets again. Right. And you will see commodities bottom and take off. And how about one market that's near and dear to you, Larry, the, the market for gold and other precious metals? How will the crisis affect gold? Well, gold has a little bit more bottoming work to do, but just like the rest of the commodity complex, ultimately it's going to become a crisis hedge against the, the, the implosion of Western governments. And that's when gold will really do well, not because of inflation, but because governments are imploding. And that's, that's really... The, the true role of gold as a hedge against collapsing governments. Well, thanks, Larry. I know that you've got a special briefing planned shortly to go into this subject in much more detail. We look forward to hearing uh, your insights. Yeah, as, you know, that, that's right. And, you know, I'm very, very serious and very concerned about this crisis. I think a lot of people are very complacent about it. Mm -hmm. So I've put together, with the help of your team there and other folks at Weiss Research, uh, a series of online briefings next week, next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, July 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And in each of these briefings, I'll go into this crisis in detail, how it's going to unfold, the consequences to your wealth, and how to protect and grow your wealth and survive this crisis because it's going to last quite some time. So I, I urge everyone to attend those briefings and keep an eye out for your inbox for details. Absolutely. Thanks, Larry. We'll have to have you back again very, very soon. All right, Mike. Thanks. Thanks for calling on me. Interesting times, no doubt. <laughs> you bet. And there you have it, folks, the latest from Larry Edelson, editor of our Real Wealth Report. Thanks for joining us on Money and Markets Extra today. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you're registered to attend Larry's historic online briefing, Shocking Forecasts for 2015 to 2020. It's next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And to register now, simply click this link. Until next time, good investing.